Welcome to Data to Decisions. In this episode, we will take a publicly available data set and convert it into an effective and insightful report in Microsoft Excel. Specifically, we'll be taking this economic news release that was released just a couple of days ago on unemployment and employment statistics from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which provides unemployment and the labor force numbers for each state within the United States. This is the topic that we're gonna deal with. We will be using some simple Excel techniques to create an entirely dynamic and interactive report. So what you see on screen is the final output, which provides answers to the key questions on this top. When we look at the raw data, some of the questions that we need answers are, which states have had the highest unemployment rate? Which states have the least unemployment rate? Similarly, which states have seen the increase in unemployment rate recently? And also change in unemployment rates compared to the past year. For example, here we are dealing with November 2023 data. We want to know which states have seen an increase or a decrease compared to the November of 2022, about a year ago. So these very simple basic questions, we want to find the answers to in an effective manner. So with our objective to find answers to these questions, the first thing I did was to come up with a mockup or a wireframe of what my final report would look like. At the beginning, what I had in mind was just a side panel on the left where I have all the summary metrics answering these key questions. At the same time, I want to leverage the fact that this is a geographic data because we have data by state. I want to have a more interactive map visual, which allows the user to look at different measures in an interactive dynamic way so that the map represents the specific measure the user chooses. I also wanted to have the top 10 and the bottom 10 table, which provides the states with the highest unemployment percentage or the lowest. So it's very easy to see them in a table format. And also, this is also dynamic. If I change a measure, then you can see that the table also updates based on that measure. So this is the effect that I wanted to have, but obviously there is a lot of steps that go from the raw data until this point of a final report, which works and functions the way we want. So I listed down the steps that I need to accomplish or the features that I need to enable in order for me to complete this report. Those are the specific tasks that I will be going through step by step. Let me just give you the list of those so that you understand what we will be covering in the rest of the video. First of all, we are sourcing the data from a website. So we wanna make sure that we connect to the website, extract the data into Excel. Next, we want to make sure that the data is clean and all the data that we need are present in that table and nothing more. Then, if there are any issues with the data, we need to make sure we clean it up before we produce the final report. Then we need to make sure that are there calculations that we need, but they're not in the raw data. Then we need to add them to the data. Then we go about developing this report First, on the left side, as I said, we need these summary numbers, the number of states where there is an increase, decrease, and all that. So we need to calculate those metrics. Then we need to create a visual, which is a data bar uh, around these metrics. Then we have an interactive uh, slicer, which controls both the map visual and also the table. So we need to make sure we set up correctly in order for this dynamic interactive slicer. Then of course the map visual itself has to be created and the settings for that map visual has to be set up in order to take into account the dynamic input from the slicer. And then we create these two top 10 and the bottom 10 tables with some simple Excel formula, which we have covered in one of the previous videos, but we will be doing that again. Then we also have little things here where you can see the arrows, uh, which are red and green color. On the, and also we have arrows here on the top 10 and the bottom 10 tables, which actually show which metric are we actually 
uh, sorting the tables by. In order to make sure that those arrows are dynamic, we need to write the formulas accordingly. So all of these use very simple techniques. We'll be looking at step-by-step -step how to accomplish this from start to finish. Before we get started on that, a couple of notes around where this will be relevant to you. You may not be looking at the specific exact Bureau of Labor Statistics data, but it, the techniques that we cover can still be relevant to you. So let me give you a couple of business scenarios. Let's say, for example, in a human resources scenario where you have employee metrics such as performance rating, training completion rates, attendance uh, rates, and so on. So you have those measures, and then you want to analyze them by the location of the employee or the office. Um, so that is an example where you have a geographic attribute, which is location of the employee or the office, and then you have multiple measures about the employee performance and other attributes. Another example would be in a sales scenario where you have sales metrics like sales amounts, units sold, average order value, and so on. And then you want to analyze that by the location of a sales rep, by, let's say, a state or a country where the salesperson is. In, even in that case, we have a geographic attribute like the sales uh, rep location. And then you have multiple measures about sales. So wherever you have multiple measures and you want to build that interactivity for the user to choose the measure, and you have a geographic attribute that you can use to plot on a map visual, this video will be helpful to you because the techniques that we will use and learn will apply to your scenario as well. So let's get started. 